Um, anyway, um, uh, 6.49, and many of us will be heading back to work this morning after the bank holiday weekend, but research for this programme has found a big increase in the number of people working from home. Uh, ben is looking at this for us today. It's a huge increase, isn't it, Ben? Yeah, so if you've got the, well, Tuesday morning blues going back to work today, uh, you are not alone. But we asked the Office for National Statistics uh, to crunch some of the numbers for us. This is part of their massive labour force survey. And it's a survey that gives us an idea of where and how people are working and how that's changed. Uh, and what they found is there's been a huge jump in the number of people who are working from home. So not having to go to the office on that commute yep. at all. Uh, it's jumped over the last 10 years from 884,000 to, well, over one and a half million of us. So a rise of about 74% over that. So a significant change. And there's also 200,000 people who are now working from somewhere that is not their home, but they don't work in an office either. So maybe in a coffee shop or in one of these shared working spaces. Um, so the big question though is what impact that has on workers because we know maybe it offers a bit of flexibility to staff, it keeps costs down for companies but also there are two big pitfalls. One is the number of distractions that you might have at home, maybe the washing machine the or the doorbell, barking, all that sort of children stuff. Children arriving home from school. Yeah, clearly big problems that will reduce your productivity. I'm sensing you I know this from experience here. <laughs> but there's also a problem too, and the mental health charity Mind says it's really increasing isolation and loneliness because we don't have that work feel with our colleagues mm. and our friends that you might get to see in the workplace. Uh, so yesterday we caught up with some people who work from home and asked them how they avoid all those distractions and deal with some of that isolation. I like the flexibility of it, of being able to go out there and meet other people. So it's a lot more enjoyable because you can go out, whereas if you stay at home, you start procrastinating and doing things that you shouldn't be doing. It's really hard to clock off if you work from home because you're like, oh, just five more minutes, just five more minutes, I'll just do this one thing. And then you find yourself working until like 10, 11 at night. Remote working like this is, for me, is brilliant because I kind of get up and go to work. And then when I leave, my laptop goes in my bag and I don't look at it till the next day. <laughs> Isolation is a big factor. So if I work at home for two or three days on the bounce without um, seeing other people, I tend to get cabin fever. So I quite often go to cafes or co-working spaces just for that interaction. I find it helps my productivity as well as my motivation if I can be around other people and that's what I miss from not working in an office. So some of the pros and cons there of working from home or in a coffee shop or a shared office space. Um, now, you might think it's great news then if you can deal with all of those problems, but there are some notable exceptions. Some companies do not want to let you do this. A lot of firms right. are trying to encourage it. Uh, Marissa Mayer, who was the chief executive of Yahoo, she, when she started there, she drove into the company's headquarters and realised the car park was empty. She said, where are all the staff? And they said, well, they're all working from home. And she actually logged on and found out they weren't doing very much. So she, she banned it and got everyone on back in the office and she said that was because look technology enables us to do so much more stuff now from home which is great but the problem is that isolation and the communication and she says it's all about the communication getting people to talk to each other is where some of the biggest ideas come from I think somebody made that point didn't they you, you never stop if you're working from home sometimes you just never stop you have to have the discipline of a start yeah. time and a finish time and then breaks S and all that sort so of thing that are a real about. problem as well yeah thank you yes. very interesting I would like discipline I think yeah, you start very late in the day. <laughs> Two o'clock starting day. Yeah, and end very early. Yes, <laughs> for that end at point. three. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ducky, you have to. Well, these two are talking about they're teasing me because they think that I was in some sort of pedalo in the aqua bike <laughs> world championship. When, when you call it an aqua bike, I thought it was one of those things with massive wheels that like look like you know, and then you pedal and it's got big handle. You, know. you start low in the water and then you rise up. <laughs> so you, you're you educating go. us all this morning. <laughs> aqua bike, long swim, long bike on a bicycle. Anyway, Congratulations! That lots was of people yep. coming back from um, work. Some of them has been big changes, isn't there? Lots of people working from home now. Yes. As well. So look, if you're struggling to get the motivation to go back into work this morning after the bank holiday yep. uh, you'll have the Tuesday morning blues but um, look, we've been speaking to the Office for National Statistics and we asked them to crunch some of the numbers because they carry out a labour market uh, survey every year it's pretty comprehensive and it tells us about the changes in how and where we're working um, and they've found that over the last 10 years there has been a massive jump in the number of people working from home uh, the figures are pretty stark up 74 percent over the last 10 years up from 884,000 back in 2008 to more 
more than one and a half million by last year. Um, and there's also been an increase in the number of people who are working away from home, but not necessarily in an office. So that might be in a coffee shop or one of these shared working spaces that are popping up all over the country now as well. 200,000 more people working like that at the end of last year than they did in the 10 years before. Um, so some fundamental changes um, and lots of questions therefore about what it means for people going to work. Well, of course it means they are more flexible, they can work when and where they want to and for business it helps bring down costs because they're not having to pay for as much office space. Uh, but the mental health charity Mind has said they've got to be careful because working from home, whilst it might sound good, it increases isolation and it increases loneliness. So there's a concern there uh, and also that lack of communication could be detrimental for business. Mm. And the other issue that we're all probably guilty of as well is that <laughs> idea of being distracted. If you're at home, maybe the washing's on, the postman comes, all sorts of things. So we spoke to uh, some workers in Manchester yesterday and asked them just how do they avoid all those distractions? I like the flexibility of it, of being able to go out there and meet other people. So it's a lot more enjoyable because you can go out, whereas if you stay at home, you start procrastinating and doing things that you shouldn't be doing. It's really hard to clock off if you work from home because you're like, oh, just five more minutes, just five more minutes, I'll just do this one thing. And then you find yourself working until like 10, 11 at night. Remote working like this is, for me, is brilliant because I kind of get up and go to work. And then when I leave, my laptop goes in my bag and I don't look at it until the next day. <laughs> Isolation is a big factor. So if I work at home for two or three days on the bounce without um, seeing other people, I tend to get cabin fever. So I quite often go to cafes or co-working spaces just for that interaction. I find it helps my productivity as well as my motivation if I can be around other people and that's what I miss from not working in an office. So some of the pros and cons there of not working in an office, and it's of course not for everyone, not for every business. We know that the chief executive of Yahoo, when she took over there uh, a few years ago, she drove into the office on the first day and there was no cars in the car park. And she said to everyone, where, where is everyone? And said, well, they all work from home because technology allows that to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, she said she was having none of it, uh, asked them all to come into work because communication, that thing that we rely on so much to get our everyday jobs done, uh, does suffer when we're working at home even though technology allows it. And of course, as we've touched on, that idea of isolation or loneliness, one to consider too. Uh, ben, you're going to be back after 8 o'clock talking about a sort of royal baby business. Because you were yes. saying earlier, the, the shawl that Princess Charlotte wore when she was born, ha sold how many? Yeah, uh, about 100,000 around the world. I mean, she was, what, about 11 hours old, sold 100,000 of them, 183 countries. This is it, actually. Uh, so just 11 hours old, already a fashion setter, uh, but made in Nottingham. And the royals have been very good at supporting British business. And that, we'll talk about that, some of those great examples, a little later. Bit of rain around uh, next few days. So a royal baby can be a huge boost to British business. Um, ben was talking to us just before eight o'clock about um, sales of blankets and shawls after Princess Charlotte was born. It can make a real difference, can't yeah, it? Ben? I mean, I'm sort of nervous about talking about it because we've not even seen this baby yet, have we? But um, it's huge because you know when we get that first glimpse of the new arrival later today, um, there will clearly be a lot of attention on the baby, but also what the baby is wearing. Um, and there is precedent for this because um, you know managing to create huge numbers of sales, huge amounts of profit for companies if they get it right, if the baby is seen wearing a certain thing. So, I mean, just to talk about Princess Charlotte, so what, just 11 hours she was at the front door of the Lindo Wing there in London um, uh, wearing the shawl. Now, the shawl sells for, what, about 68 quid. It's a British firm uh, made in Nottingham. They sold 100,000 of those in 183 countries because it was pictured on the baby on that first morning. So clearly, and we know already, the Royals are very good at trying to support British business, British mm. designers, British fashion brands, all that sort of thing. They will be inundated with gifts for the new baby. So what someone has to do at Kensington Palace then is wade through all of these, check a lot of history about where they're from, where they're made, and make sure there's nothing kind of, you know, sweatshop related in anywhere. Um, and they will be looking at what they can buy next. And then, I mean, just a, a perfect example too, Prince George, you will remember that famous picture that he met Barack and Michelle Obama oh, in the dressing, uh, gown. The dressing yeah. gown. Now I interviewed the chief executive of the company that sells this dressing gown. Uh, it's a personalised one uh, back in 2016. Uh, within seven minutes, yep. seven minutes, they sold a million of these. Seven minutes on the website. How so they, how much do they cost? Uh, about 90 quid. Honestly. Yeah. So <laughs> flying off the. Um, 
And if you take the How whole kit, because ready the pyjamas and the dressing gown and everything like that. Uh, well, they weren't. That was the yeah. problem. So what happened is that the website went down. They were inundated. They had to speak to their supplier. And I said to them, look, how do you get your dressing gown in a picture like that? And what they did was just send it to the palace. They knew nothing about it. They didn't get a thank you email. They didn't get a letter or anything like that, because clearly there is so much that is sent there. First thing they knew about it was when he woke up, turned over his phone, and his phone had gone absolutely crazy. This is the boss of the company uh, with the famous photo. Uh, so therefore, that really set up that business. Wow. So it really does have the power to shift stuff. Yep. Uh, and I bet there's a lot of stuff. The postman will have quite a heavy bag this morning going to Kensington Palace or up to Windsor uh, yes. to deliver all of this stuff. Um, and as we, we don't even know when we're going to see, um, Prince Harry said, what, two in days. two days. So tomorrow we may see a picture. Yep. of the baby. We know that we also do know um, from our royal correspondent, I think, or is it Vicky Arbiter telling us that it's going to be kind of quite a private affair, just one yeah. photographer, still quite picture. quite low key, hasn't it, for yeah. a royal baby? Yeah, I mean, anyway. very different to those sort of scenes that you see in you know, outside the Lindo Wing, Lindo wing yeah. in London. But nonetheless, you know, a lot of attention on what it's wearing. Thank you. He is wearing. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. How dare you. Uh, something else <laughs> to the tower.